Hello everyone. Welcome back to the linguistics class. In the last class, we had discussed about Indian English. In today's class, I shall be adding a few more points on uh, Indian English. English, as you know, enjoys a privileged position in India, although it is considered as uh, the language of the colonial masters. Uh, there has been protest from certain groups uh, of uh, people against the use of English language. Even then, English is still widely used in India. Now, let us look at the functions of English in India. It has mainly four functions, instrumental, regulative, interpersonal and innovative. Now, what do you mean by this instrumental function? English is mainly used as the medium of instruction in uh, schools and uh, colleges in India. That is basically the instrumental function of uh, English. Coming to the regulative function, it is used as the language of uh, legal and administrative systems, which is the regulative function. Now, talking about the interpersonal function, um, of course, uh, English is used as a link language among people speaking different Indian languages. It is also used for uh, interaction with people outside the country. Uh, so, it is useful for international mobility and interaction. Moving on to the innovative uh, function of English, all of us know that English is used for creative writing. So it is it is used in innovatively. So these are basically the functions of English in India. Now let's uh, talk more about general Indian English. In the last video, I had explained to you about uh, general Indian English. I had told you that general Indian English is the English that is used by the educated Indians and uh, it is free from regional peculiarities now this english is both that is the general indian english is both descriptive as well as prescriptive now what do you mean by descriptive it is descriptive since it describes the phonological features of a variety of english and it is prescriptive because it prescribes a model for Indian speakers of English. We have elaborately discussed about uh, the difference in pronunciation, vocabulary and grammar uh, between uh, the received pronunciation and the general Indian English in our previous video. However, in today's uh, class, we shall be discussing a few more uh, points connected with uh, pronunciation. Uh, the difference in pronunciation between uh, received pronunciation and uh, general Indian English. Now, uh, one of the important differences in pronunciation is the substitution of a vowel in general Indian English for a diphthong. Uh, for example, let's take the word period. In received pronunciation, it will be pronounced as period. Okay, so there is uh, the diphthong ear there. But in general Indian English, this diphthong will be replaced by E. So it will be pronounced as period. Okay. Similarly, serious will be pronounced as series. Then aeroplane will be pronounced as aeroplane. So these are the differences in pronunciation between um, the received pronunciation and the general Indian English. Moving on to the vocabulary items, there are certain uh, words uh, that have been coined uh, from the peculiar uh, Indian context. For example, twice born, uh, you, you use this uh, term with reference to Brahmins. Okay, similarly, dining leaf, okay, that comes from plantain leaf. Uh, so, the, so these words uh, do not are uh, not there in um, 
received pronunciation but then these words have been formed from uh, the indian uh, languages again caste mark the the vermilion mark that is worn on the head of the hindus okay from there came uh, the lexical item caste mark similarly there are many hybrid items as well that is a combination of indian terms and english words so you have words like lathi charge tiffin carrier non dramin tonga driver etc let's go on to the next slide yes uh, a few more uh, vocabulary items um, that are based on uh, you know uh, they, uh, they are based on uh, specific indian context uh, especially the based on the caste system um, prevalent in india so from our caste system we have words uh, or coinages like forehead marking nine stranded thread etc there are also literal translations from indian languages Uh, you have um, phrases like pin drop silence to eat fresh air helpless as a calf etc now talking about collocations you know collocations are uh, words that go together okay so you have collocations that are specific to indian context like rice eating ceremony cow worship brother anointing ceremony etc um another interesting feature of general indian english is that sometimes a clause is reduced to a noun phrase for example you have a noun phrase uh, in general indian english like england returned uh, to refer to a clause like one who has been to england okay another noun phrase commonly used noun phrases the himalayan blunder okay so these are the commonly um these are the common differences um between uh, the general indian english and uh, the received pronunciation so with that we have completed indian english next we will move on to the australian english now australian english is basically english language that is used in australia okay and uh, this uh, australian english was first recorded in 1940 it is only since then that the features of australian english uh, have been regarded as distinctively australian now the most remarkable feature of australian english is its homogeneity what do you mean by homogeneity it means that there is no regional differences um as in the case of british english or american english so uh, you see that in australian english it takes features both from uh, british and american english uh, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have its own unique uh, features it does have unique features as well as um, exclusive vocabulary so we shall be uh, discussing more on that in the coming slides first let's talk about pronunciation in received pronunciation you have the sound e whereas in australian pronunciation the same sound will be pronounced as a okay so c will be pronounced as c similarly o will be a so school becomes sco a becomes a so bad will be pronounced as bad a becomes i so say becomes say au becomes al so now becomes now l o so no becomes now ear becomes e so here becomes he air becomes a so hair becomes hey okay uh, common differences another difference between um australian english and uh, received pronunciation uh, one is that it is a uh, sorry it's not a uh, A difference. On the other hand, a peculiar feature of uh, 
Australian English is that it is non-rotic. Non-rotic in the sense that uh, R is not pronounced. Okay, if it comes at the end of the syllable or if it is uh, immediately followed by a consonant. For example, ka, R is silent. Again, hot. Again, R is silent. So that is why we say that uh, R is non-rotic. Um, then uh, another uh, important uh, feature of Australian English is that it is stress. The stress is evenly spaced. Um, not like uh, receipt pronunciation. It is more evenly spaced. The stress is more evenly spaced than in received pronunciation. Um, consonants actually do not differ much from receipt pronunciation. It, all, it is almost the same as the receipt pronunciation. Coming to the spelling, Australian spelling is more or less similar to British spelling. Organize and realize will be spelled with I-S-E, okay, not I-E-Z-E, -E, but it will be I-S-E, uh, similar to the British spelling. Again, uh, C-O-L-O-U-R and F-A-V-O-U-R-I-T, color and favorite, will have O-U-R. It will be spelled with U in it, uh, unlike the American spelling. Now, there's an exception to it. Uh, Labor Party will be without U, as well as Victor Harbour without U. Okay, And uh, Program and Jail. Uh, these words are more common than Program and Gel. Coming to the vocabulary, uh, a vocabulary is formed, Australian vocabulary is formed by additions from Australian names or words from Australian languages. For example, you have kangaroo, which is an animal, boomerang, which is a weapon, corbury, which is um, a ritualistic um, uh, Australian dance, an aboriginal uh, dance, in fact. So, these are all uh, words that came from Australian languages. Uh, new words have also been coined from existing English words like outback, tucker box, stockman, etc. Some old words have been given new meaning, uh, for example, wattle bush uh, to refer to a rural area or paddock for a fence land. Now, uh, the word robin is not used for a specific bird. On the other hand, the word robin is used for various birds seen only in Australia. Uh, let's see certain uh, words which are unique uh, to Australia. For example, you have the word uh, amber for beer, arvo for afternoon, barack for cheer, butte for great, block for man, chook for chicken, clobber for cloths. And uh, these are specific uh, Australian words uh, used specifically uh, in Australia like dingo, a wild dog, billabong for a branch of river forming backwater, woomera for a weapon, joe for a young kangaroo, Jambak for sheep, jackaroo for a type of agricultural worker. Uh, now, talking about grammar, you see that uh, the Australians um, usually they position but at the end of the sentence. For example, um, I didn't know but instead of but I didn't know. Okay, so that is one uh, difference. Again, um, they uh, form unique set of uh, uh, diminutives uh, by adding O or IE to the end of abbreviated words like uh, um, aboriginal. Uh, for that, uh, the short form, the diminutive will be abo. Then for aggressive, it will be agro. And uh, for uh, evening, it will be evo. Uh, milkman, it will be milko. And uh, irregular past tense, they usually use the irregular past tense and past participles. For example, spell uh, and smell become spelt and smelt. 1100 will be, um, will be uh, uh, written as 1100, like, uh, the, like in American English. Okay, and uh, similarly, they uh, use um, 
singular after collective nouns for example uh, the football team has scored a goal not the football team have scored a goal the football team have scored a goal is what is used in the british english but uh, here they follow the american english however on the whole they follow um, the grammar of the standard british english we have come to the end of australian english um, we shall be dealing more with the varieties of english in the next class thank you so much for your patient listening see you thank you